Well, first of all, I'd like to thank you for inviting me. Secondly, I'd like to explain I'm a pharmacist and I have no expertise in wound care. Um, uh, and that won't stop me. Um, I'm a pharmacist, but I'm not going to be talking about dressings or formularies. I'm going to be talking about the Carter programme and what we're doing with regards wound care as part of my project. So before I start, who knows anything about the Carter programme and process? Well, we've, got, we've got some hands, but not many. Okay? Who knows about GERFT? Get it right first time. Oh, many more. Okay? Both of those are relevant to my presentation. So, what I'm going to talk to you about is what, what on earth is Lord Carter doing about wound care? Where does it sit into his programme? And what might it mean going forward? And how will that get me to what I said before the break, which is I know somebody who's listening. And I think somebody is listening, and I am optimistic that your voices have somewhere to be heard. Um, although I'm certain we won't do it as fast or as directly as you'd like to. But nevertheless, somebody's listening. OK. So Lord Carter. Lord Carter of Coles was approached um, nearly four years ago by the Secretary of State to look at operational productivity in the NHS, and he was asked to start with acute trusts. And he started with acute trusts because they spend 75% of provider expenditure, so not unreasonable. And Lord Carter developed a methodology to undertake a review, which is to look at major areas of spend. So he looks at workforce, he looks at estates, he looks at corporate services, and he looks at medicines and pharmacy. He did in the acute review. And I looked at medicines and pharmacy in the acute review, and we spend £7 billion on medicines in the acute provider sector. And we spend £700 million on pharmacy services. So we published a review in February 2016 that started to develop and now became operational productivity, was done in parallel with the Get It Right First Time team that were publishing their approach. And the approaches are very similar for Carter and Get It Right First team, and we're all hosted now in NHS Improvement in a Department of Operational Productivity. So for those of you who are interested in wounds, there's probably a lot of jargon in there. Nevertheless, that's where I'm working, and that's the background. So what does Lord Carter do? Lord Carter thinks that the way to look at improving the NHS is to look at value for money and what we spend. And he does this because he's done lots of reviews nationally. He's a very clever man. I'm, just, I'm a complete hero. I call him the good Lord. So what Patrick does is, first of all, say, if I'm going to undertake a review... There's no point in me employing people in the Department of Health or NHS Improvement or NHS England or any other national body because if I do that, I'll write a report that will only be good for the shelf builders. And I'm just not interested in writing a report that are my opinions. So he puts together some people to lead project streams to work with the cohort of trusts. And he makes an assumption that there's nothing new out there for us to find. That somewhere in the NHS, there is already best practice. And there's best practice from an operational, patient outcome, patient experience, value for money perspective. And our job is to go out and find what good looks like in delivering services, because it's already there. He sometimes asks to go internationally. I've never had to do that, really, because it's always here in the NHS. So I don't come up with anything new. Didn't last time, not going to this time. So we find out what good looks like, and we heard it this morning. Lots of people told us what good looks like, but they also told us, despite knowing that for 25 years, we haven't delivered it. Okay, so how are you going to deliver and bring everybody up to best practice? Well, you start working with trusts who speak the language, know what they're talking about, to tell you what it's really like out there, so you're not working in isolation. You get them to tell you what good looks like for wound care, 
which is what I'm interested in my project and I'm here today. Then he says, if you want to effect change, and we heard this morning about sustainability, then if you're going to manage something and you're going to improve something, and any of you have looked at the, NA, the IHI, the Institute of Healthcare Improvement um, Methodology, I'm sure lots of you have done improvement work. First thing to do for improvement work, you name it, you define it, you measure it, and you track it. Okay, and so improving productivity is the same as quality improvement if you decide that you need metrics and benchmarks because that's how you get sustainability. And you don't do it by, great, 10-week audit. We've got lots of those. We've got a guest paper. We've got all of that. You've got to, from there, say, what are the national ongoing metrics which we need to define, collect, and measure to drive improvement and improve. So that's what he does. And so he gets some of us to, to go around doing this stuff, and then he publishes a report and moves us into implementation stage. And where we are with, with Carter 2, which is what we're doing now, which is mental health and community, which is the work I'm doing, but also there's an ambulance review and a specialist acute review. We, in mental health and community, are frantically redrafting to publish on the 24th of May. And so I can't possibly tell you what he's going to say on the 24th of May, except for he's going to talk about one of the most significant areas of community health service provision we identified in discussion with cohort trusts was wound care. Now, you're all going to be really disappointed if you want me to talk about legs, okay? I'm going to talk about wound care, so I went in as a non-expert, okay? And then I've learned through the year which bits of wound care are important. He's going to say, he might say, I couldn't possibly tell you, there were 2.2 million wounds managed in the NHS in 12-13. You all know that because you've all read the guest paper and all the other things where I got this data from. We know that these wounds were over nearly 19 million practice visits, 11 million community nurse visits, 7.7 .7 million GP visits, and 3.4 million hospital outpatient visits. Big numbers, enough to get the good Lord's attention to say there's something going on. We know that the annual cost is five billion. Okay, we also know it's not done very well. It doesn't say that. Um, but we did look at and found considerable variation because what Patrick does, if you benchmark and you do quality improvement, what do you look like? You try and narrow variation. You look for standardization and exceptionality. Okay, and if you've got massive variation, it's probably unwarranted and it's probably poor quality. Just general principles. It's not tricky. What I do is very easy. Um, and we found, he found, that there is scope for improvement in the wound care pathway for patients, and we can do something to reduce unwarranted variation. Okay, and da 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 bit more. Despite the importance of its service and its impact on patients, do you know what? You're going to be very surprised by this. Most trusts do not capture basic information on wound care, including the numbers of patients with wounds, wound types, treatment plans, or most critically, wound healing rates. They don't. Many trusts also lack guidance on how to manage different types of wounds and the processes community nurses use to ensure treatment meets patient needs. Well, we heard that this morning, didn't we? So I'm pleased that I had a warm-up act. Um, we observed significant variations in how specialist tissue viability nurses were deployed. We know that even in Heidi's patch, you've got a problem with your commissioners. Well, you've never had a problem with your commissioners. You have variability with some commissioners recognising your service and some not. So we've got some variability. And this is just one. And we also know that uh, we've got variation in mobile technology. Some people are using paper. How are we going to collect data if you're still using paper? If the technology isn't collecting the stuff we need that is about healing, healing rates and referrals and all of that stuff, how are we going to improve it? Blah, 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 blah. And he's going to rake a recommendation that we do something about it. So... He has listened, but I can't possibly tell you what he might say on the 24th of May. So, these are the trusts we work with. Um, you'll get the slides afterwards. It's really just for information. There are trusts all over the country. We worked with community trusts. That's the scope 
of the project, the implications and the implementation will go wider. Because if we learnt anything, that it's about pathways, and pathways do not recognize, recognize um, uh, trust and organizational boundaries. So we've managed to get something in um, about across boundaries. So my project is Medicines, Pharmacy and Pathways in Mental Health and Community. So March to, I started in March, and I had March till the end of November, two days a week to do this. And since December, I've had a whole third day a week. And I'm looking at mental health, community services, medicines, pharmacy, and pathways. So you'll forgive me if I haven't done a lot of deep dive detail, because you guys work at this all of the time. My job was to try and extract quickly what Lord Carter might say about an area for improvement and listen to what, what the requirements were of many of the people in the room who I've met over the, and been inspired by over the last year. And so when I set out and I wrote my... Um, project initiation doc document, I talked about optimising pharmacy services and making better use of specialist pharmacists to make better use of medicines. It's not about saving money. We don't spend enough money on medicines for them to stand up as a priority. I know that dressings are expensive, but the total spend in community and mental health trusts on medicines through their own budgets is $254 million. Okay. Now, when I told Black Patrick Carter at his board that we only spend 254 million, it doesn't count everything that goes through primary care. It doesn't count everything that goes secondary care. Just on the medicines, he said something like, "And you've just talked yourself out of a job," because if it's only 254 million, there's not enough to warrant going after it. Okay, because that's how they think nationally. If there's seven billion in the acute sector that you could do better with. Why would you worry about the 254? And I said, but Patrick, remember, I didn't say it was about the cost of the medicines. It's about how you use them and the impact. And the impact is to think about pathways, how we use medicines-related products to think about patient outcomes, relapse rates, readmissions, formulations, and all of these other bits. And it's to identify ways we can improve, including thinking more broadly about clinical pathways than individual medicines. So we said, OK, you can stay in the room. Tell me some more. So I said, in the community health service sector, it's actually about using some of the dressings and thinking about clinical activity to work out how we optimise our use of our workforce. We heard that this morning. Why would you keep mopping somebody's leg it's not a good use of your time. It doesn't drive satisfaction. It doesn't drive improvement. People all want to go out there and do a good job. And they're not doing a good job. Arguably, they're causing harm by not knowing. But nobody's willfully doing anything wrong. Everyone's spread too thin. We can't get the messages out. and We can't standardise. But we have an enormously motivated workforce. We are not about... Um, uh, discouraging our workforce. We're about helping them to do things better and trying to find out what might do better. So what we need to do is think about workforce activities that are impacted by anything to do with the medicine. And yes, dressings are not really medicines, but I was the only person in community health looking at anything about this with clinical outcomes. So it was quite clear I needed to look at wound care. So I started on the 1st of March 2017, and on the 7th of March, I fortunately went to an NHS England day and met quite a few people in the room and heard Julian Guest and the Vowdens and Kath Evans and everybody tell me everything I'm telling you back again today. That, that slide, which everyone's already told you about. I think I just summarise it saying it's a bloody big issue and we don't do it very well. Okay, the only thing I've added is that we looked at some benchmarking data because we do benchmarking and we're looking at workforce and we found out that 39% of district nursing or community nursing, because they're not district nurses because we've taken them out, haven't we, and we've de-skilled. So community nursing, 39% according to the NHS benchmarking is spent on uh, pressure ulcers and 12% on other wound dressing. 51% of the clinical time, big ticket. We know all of this too. This only summarises what you heard this morning. And the worst thing for all of you lot and us, we're all playing on a crowded pitch. You just walk around here and show me how many stalls there are about, is it legs matters? How many societies have we got? 
You know, you're as bad as pharmacy. We've got a society for everything. No wonder the politicians aren't listening because they're getting a slightly different story from everybody. We've got to pull it together because when we divide and specialise, we fragment. It's a crowd pitch. I haven't got everybody in here, but I had to try and find out what on earth was going on because everybody said to me, you don't want to do that, girl, because it's really far too busy. And, you know, we've got lots of work going on. We don't need you. Um, well, no, nobody said we don't need you. They kept saying, but don't you know everybody's already doing all of that? So I had to find my own space, okay? And there's lots more work that I don't know about. What was, my, what was Lord Carter's space? So I went back to my theories. Lord Carter's about metric, metrics. By going out, and I'm a pharmacist, we learned there was lots about logistics and supply chain. The, you know, why would TVNs be experts in, in supply chain? I didn't appoint any of you to be good at supply chain or any of your nursing colleagues. So where are my pharmacists working in your trust supporting you or your primary care or your CCG pharmacists really looking at the issues? They're not. So we need to get into that and we need to say what good looks like, which is easy because you've already told me this morning and over the year. So I met with the leading change adding value, the lovely Una, Brenda, uh, lots of people. And you said, what we need to know is what are the outcomes? And we looked at the guest paper and said, it's all about, are you referring in a timely fashion to vascular surgeons? So if we all agree that you should have rapid referral, why aren't we collecting referral rates? Comparing you and finding the trust that's got poor referral rates and going and saying, maybe we can help you there. Maybe you've got high referral rates and maybe you've got good outcomes and maybe you show your commissioners that that's what you need to do. Uh, we overlap with the sequin. Are you actually assessing? We've heard it's assess, treat, refer. Are we actually assessing properly? If you're healing well, you should be healed in 12, in, in 12 weeks, shouldn't you? Or 16. So how many patients in each trust are giving only three months as a package of care or six months or 12 months? Because that's going to tell you something about the quality. We all know you'll have some patients who will never heal, but it should be few, not the most. Um, and well, you need to tell me how many patients you've got across all your wound care categories because then I can look at your resources and say you're disproportionately not funding it properly because I have a denominator, numbers of patients, time to treatment and what you're spending. We don't have any of that. So what I did, I did a pilot data collection and you won't be surprised and everybody worked with me to say this is not currently collected in a national way and should be. And work with me, am I right? Yeah, yeah, we got that. And then I did a pilot, and it was brilliant. Even the people who'd helped me define the metrics who knew what was right couldn't give them to me. So I'm not going to give you a big table of my 23 cohort trusts and what percentage couldn't give me. I'm just going to tell you this data is not collected. People don't agree on the definitions. People haven't set up their IT systems in a standard way. They don't know how to get the data out if it's in. They have a different service for podiatry than TVN to community. It's a bloody mess. It's just not there. Now, that's not true. Actually, there's going to be at least one person in the room who can give me all of this today. But actually, I already know that because I told you at the start, I know if good is already out there. What I'm interested in is why it isn't everywhere. Okay, so when I'm saying it's bad, remember, I know it's out there. And I know that somebody has got their system one working for this, but we haven't shared it with everybody else to set it up. I know somebody's got really good IT, but we don't know how to share it and set it up. I know somebody's got their commissions, and I'm on a red light. So, you already know logistics and splats, because I didn't read the report to you, so I've gone a bit off piste. But, um, uh, so you know all of this, and we've got to sort it. I haven't done anything about it yet, okay? Done nothing. All I've done is get ready to write a report, because my job was to write a report, and I read you what the report may or may not say. And then... And this is, you'll see this when you get it, this is basically just, we've managed to get a diagram potentially into a report, which I can't share with you because it's perder because of local elections. But it basically shows that if you've got a stupid supply chain, you delay healing and put more clinical time in. If you don't refer, you delay healing and put more clinical time in. It costs you more, you don't heal so quickly. It's not very tricky. Um, uh, I've already talked about defining what good looks like. It's everything you told me this morning, but nobody else has got a national voice yet to do it. And so next steps. We are going to report, no idea what it will say. Um, and uh, we then move into implementation, but all I was asked to do was do a review, so nothing changes. All I've done is shine a light nationally. And by shining a light nationally, 
We've agreed, and actually I, was, I had written a recommendation that says we need a national strategy, and we need a national board to bring it together. And I drafted that when the bloody lords had a meeting and said we need a national strategy, and the real big people in the system said, oh, yes. And so the nurse director at NHS England, NHS Improvement, said we need a national strategic board, and its governance is in draft now. And next week, NHS Improvement... NHSE and all the good people in this room who are into this stuff are meeting together to sort that National Strategic Board, which will have leg, pressure ulcer and something else in it. It'll have a metric subscreen and a pathways subscreen and an education and training and a resource stream. And I'm going to be into the um, data one, working with my colleagues at the Business Services Authority because we've also got to look at primary care. And we've got to look at acute trust because it's a pathway thing, so it will be m more... Um, so that's all said in that, and then we work with the surgeons and the Get It Right First Time programme because they're only acute, but that's how we're going to bring the surgeons in because we've persuaded Professor Tim Briggs that wound care will be his first non-medically led project. We hope, but I couldn't tell you that because I can't tell you what's in the report. And so this is all about saying it's thinking about the products, the clinical workforce and patient outcomes and keeping them all in mind together. Lovely. Many thanks. Many thanks, Anne.